You're probably here because you got some weird drivability issues with your Ford anything. Mustang, F-150, Bronco. They threw pretty much the same garbage in all of them, and I love it. I love all that garbage. So today, we're going to replace the throttle position sensor on our old 95 Ford F-150, and hopefully it doesn't burn down. And even if it does, just insurance claims that it's not... It's fine. It made it real easy to diagnose these issues. Not only did it give me one code for throttle position sensor failing, it actually gave me dos codes, which is two in Spanish. See, now you're learning Spanish and throttle position sensor issues. But the main issue that's presenting itself is a dead throttle pedal. Like I can press it and things kind of happen. Like a lot of screaming happens, a lot of violence is happening in here, but it doesn't sound right. It doesn't feel right. It's clearly down on power. I'm not quite sure what's going on but being 200 and some thousand miles in a factory throttle position sensor, most likely. <laughs> oh yeah, I think this is, I think we can narrow it down without even testing, but we're gonna do some testing anyways. And fortunately for us, Ford in their infinite wisdom put the throttle position sensor on the bottom of the throttle body. So that means a lot of things gotta come off. Normally there'd be a plastic cover that goes over the nonsense all right here, so you can't see your throttle linkages. Mine's in the, the bed that, that's filled with hay and uh, frisbee golf and whatever this exhaust manifold's doing back here. First thing we're gonna do is pop our throttle cable off. Be sure to only pry on the metal spot because if you pry too hard on this plastic part right here, well, you're gonna have two problems today. Throttle position sensor and a throttle cable. For reasons unknown, Ford uses a confusing mixture of metric and standard over these years, but to disconnect these intake tubes, it's two eight millimeter hose clamps. And then you can just pop off the intake tubes and get covered with the blackest goo you've ever seen in your life, probably. Or it's foreshadowing a leak. Maybe that's what happened here, who knows? I'll show it later in the video. We'll, we'll figure it out together. Disconnect this little evap venti guy. And then, using a deep 13 millimeter socket, remove the nut from the stud that holds this bracket on. Pull it out of the way and set to the side. And then, because I consistently, uh, as soon as I set something down, I immediately lose it. I like to thread the bolts and the nuts right back where I found them. That way, I can only lose them because they were where they're supposed to be. Then use your good old fashioned Jaws of Life channel lock pliers to remove the tension clamp from the upper coolant hose. And because it's clearly too good for its home, I'll use the same Jaws of Life to break it loose and then pop it off. And then in true fashion, I'll pop this hose off and forget that there's coolant in it. I need to shove a bolt in there, but I don't have a bolt anywhere nearby. So how about three eighths ish bolt sitting around? That way you don't lose too much coolant on the ground and into your grass. I'm actually pretty sure that's how plants get green, the antifreeze. Normally there'd be a tension clamp down here too, but for confusing reasons, mine has a worm drive. So I'm gonna loosen that up and disconnect it too. This thing go less horrifying-ish. Disconnect the top line before you disconnect the bottom coolant line. Why, Matt? Well, let me tell you. If you disconnect the bottom first, well, it kind of makes a siphoning effect with the top line and ends up draining your heater core. Um, I like weird things to find on your truck for 400 Alex. <laughs> the daily double. Great, so none of these connectors are actually plugged into their homes and a lot of them have their clips broken. So just go ahead and disconnect all these connectors that someone's clearly gotten to before you with a pry bar. The next thing is next, we gotta disconnect the harness for idle air control valve and the little Christmas tree that's probably gonna break on the back side of it that holds the harness to it. We're gonna go ahead and clean it out while we got the throttle body off. This little clippy clappy arm here, it likes to break off. Now ask me how I know, so be really careful when you're prying it off. Now we got all that fun stuff removed and disconnected, it's finally time to remove the throttle body and get that throttle position that's there, the whole reason we were in there. So you got one bolt here on the upper front top, but then you got another bolt down on the upper lower front bottom, and then you gotta go <laughs> a little bit deep in the behind. On my body, I call this area the gruntle. The gruntle of a man is kind of in the front, but it's also the back. That, get up, take all the bolts out, there's four of them. These four bolts were three eighths for confusing, I'm assuming whatever was laying around that day, throw it on the truck reasons. And then just pop that big daddy boy off there. Yeah, like that. And if you look really closely on the throttle blade on the upper left, you can see its idle air hole is actually completely blocked off. Here's the view of the throttle position sensor we need to get off of here. Ford says you do not clean the inside of the throttle body or adjust the idle set screw. Well, you can do whatever you want. Don't let Ford tell you what to do. Now we got the throttle body off. We're going to take off the idle air control valve and great. Two black holes I can't see anything in. Now that we're using the surface of the sun as our actual light source, you can see it's pretty gummed up inside there and jammed up and doesn't really want to move. So we'll try to fix this with some carb cleaner and brake cleaner and a whole bunch of stuff rammed in there, but not a good start. Using a Phillips screwdriver and the hand of Thor, get these two Phillips screws out of here. Be careful, for whatever reason, Ford used Loctite on these. So good luck. You might end up having to use a vice grips to break them off or use a tiny little Dremel, saw a little line in there, turn them into a flathead. Be prepared though, sometimes they come out, sometimes, well, 
you get to go buy new ones and visit your hardware store today. Now we get to see what crazy voltage is this thing is. What's, what's happening inside here voltage wise? So you've got your black wire, which is your ground. Test to make sure the ground from your vehicle's ECU is actually giving you a ground. That way you eliminate right off the bat your ground being the issue for your voltage fluctuations. The orange wire actually gets four and a half to five volts from the car's ECU. Don't go wiring this to 12 volts, sir. Well, if you do it in line with this already connected and you're just probing in there and you send it 12 volts, well, all right. Now uh, your computer's gonna have a great day figuring that one out. And finally, the green wire is the signal sense wire. One of the check engine light codes that our truck was actually tossing out there was for throttle position sensor high voltage. And you plug it in, we got five volts. And if you wait a little bit, you got everything from zero to, well, five volts again. Found our problem right there. Bad throttle position sensor. But let's go ahead and test it while it's here, even though we know it's basically garbage, and see how steady the voltage is from idle all the way up to full throttle. This should move in a very linear pattern. We should see 1.1, 1.2, 2.2, 2.3, .2, all the way up to four and a half, somewhere in there. As you can see, this is basically uh, like a Daft Punk music video going on here. With all the flashing lights and all that fun jazziness. Now we're gonna fit the new sensor in there. Bolting it on straight out of the box, we got a little bit lower voltage than I looked for. I personally think OBS Fords work great between 0.9 and 0.99 volts. It's like price is right. Don't go over. Once you get into one volt, you get a problem. But after I wallered that hole out a little bit with the drill bit, got her into the mid 0.9, which is exactly where she needs to be. Now let's see if the new sensor makes a bit of difference. I'm gonna roll the throttle blade slowly open and we're gonna make sure it's linear and doesn't jump around a lot. Okay, that's, that's pretty much the exact opposite of what we got before. This is exactly what we want. I recommend going through the full swing of motion and letting the throttle blade snap closed a couple times. Recheck your screws to make sure they're tight. You're good to go. Let's go bolt this back on the truck. And before you plug anything back in, be sure to check all your connectors to make sure the pins are even in there. There's no corrosion and dirt. We found some dirt in some of these, so we're gonna blast them out with some brake cleaner and give them a little dollop of daisy. Or in this case, it's not actually sour cream. Don't actually put sour cream in it. Just put dielectric grease in it. That'll basically do the same thing. Basically. Next step is to grab yourself a new throttle body gasket, then clean all your mating surfaces one nice time clean like. Yeah, words. <laughs> Good and clean time. Whatever that means. And then just bolt your repaired assembly back on there. I torqued our throttle body bolts to 15 foot pounds each. If you don't want to torque them, great. Just, you know, do 15 foot pounds a hand. During reassembly, got to figure out why these black tubes were covered with oil. Because they were. And this evap hose, well, it's, it's exploded down here and just basically covered everything in this general vicinity with a nice film coating of oil. And you know, that's what I like on my engines. I like to get them sticky. So be sure to check yours for a leak down there. Might have one, might not. And then look at that, we did it. Got her all back together, didn't catch on fire. Sounds 10,000 times better if you use your eye ears. You probably balance this thing of Windex on it. Oh, maybe, okay, <laughs> perfect. Another job well done. Well, it's done. That's all I can ask for here. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you like it, like it. Do the, the, do the thing. But if you didn't like it, file a complaint down below in the complaint department, aka the comment section, and someone will get back to you between 24 and 48 hours. I bet they will. Although a keen eye on our channel will notice that this F-150, the throttle position sensor, they're new to our channel. That's because this is a new revival video. I've got cooking up and brewing for you. And when that smoldering pile of garbage charged goodness is ready to go, fresh out of the oven, well, if you're not subscribed, you probably won't see it unless you see it. So then, until then, here's some bloopers of me just trying to talk and do stuff on video. <laughs> oh, hey, perfect. You can barely see me and everything's on fire back there. Goddamn perfect lighting. You know what they say about things getting tighter? It's about to strip. <laughs> and when I have that smoldering pile of garbage ready for you, how the hell? That bird's huge.